In today's advanced tactics guide, we're going to be taking a look at armor protection systems and armor penetration values. It's a relatively simple system, but it adds an another layer of complexity to Flashpoint Campaign Southern Storm. And overall, it's, it's something you need to understand if you want to be more proficient at the game or combat effective. So let's just start with this T-72 down here because the T-72 is really, really going to break it down for us. Right now we're in the Cold War, so we have different weapon systems and different... And they all have different capabilities. So we'll have like a T-72 taking on an M1. And so let's just start with our T-72. So here we have our protection systems. We have AP and we have heat. Obviously the, um, the colors correspond with the number. And then we have front, side, top, rear, turret, hull. So we have like an, an AP value of 44. So basically to penetrate this tank, you would need an armor piercing weapon system that, it, that is greater than or exceeds 44. And if you want to use high explosive anti-tank, you would need a weapon system that is greater than 53 to destroy this tank. Same with the hull, same with like the sides, each one is just simulated. So if like mortars were to go off and they hit the side of the tank or the top of the tank, they're going to easily penetrate that, the top of the tank and blow it up, causing it to catastrophically explode and cook off. And then if you um, hit the rear of the tank, it's going to be mu much easier to penetrate and destroy as well. So that's a relatively simple system. Um, that's just the basic protection. If we come down here, we can see advanced composite armor. There are different types of armor. There's explosive reactive. There's non-explosive reactive. There's area protection systems. I haven't found those yet, but they should be coming. And so as you see, the advanced composite armor adds one effectiveness. And then we have more advanced composite armor. It adds three effectiveness. So we have two different types of advanced composite armors on these T-72M1s. And they overall, they add around four extra armor value to our tank. Now, if we come over here to the weapon system, we can kind of see where it's going to differentiate itself from the M1. So we have a 125 millimeter cannon on this T-72 with a range of 6,000 meters. That doesn't mean that it's effective all the way to 6,000 meters. That's just its maximum range. So if we come down here to our armor piercing rounds. We have 15 armor piercing rounds, 35 armor piercing capability, which means it's only going to be effective up to 5,000 meters. So if you were to engage an M1 or a IFV that has a greater value than 35 or 35, a value of 35 at 6,000 meters or 5,500 meters, it's not going to be as effective or it's not going to destroy it at all. Now if we move down to high explosive anti-tank, it has a, an armor penetration value of 46 at 4,000 meters. So even though we have a 6,000 meter range, we can't engage units all the way out there at 6,000 meters. We have high explosive rounds. It doesn't mean our Sabos or our high explosive anti-tank rounds are going to be effective or destroy any sort of armor system at that range. So if we navigate over to our M1s real quick, we can kind of take a look at them and compare them a little bit. Our M1s have obviously a far greater um, armor piercing value or armor value and to both like they're more resistant to armor piercing rounds and high explosive anti-tanks as you see they're kind of their top attack so like top attack missiles from like aircraft so like your i'm not going to say cobras i don't really know mi8s or mi or hinds are going to be really effective against abrams because they're with their top attack atgms or at least it's going to hit the top more likely um, the rear is still pretty strong the top's mostly its weak point as you see it has 11.7 armor rating and then the front is really strong. Armor piercing is only at a 90, while high explosive anti-tank is at 163. Now, since this is the Cold War, you're going to notice a lot of differences. Um, the M1 Abrams is effective basically um, all the way out to its maximum range with its Sabos. As you see, it has a 57 armor piercing value at max range, so 5,000 meters. It's going to be able to destroy basically any most T-72s I'm not quite sure about the T-80s at maximum range. So if that T-72 were to roll in at 5,000 meters, we would easily penetrate its frontal armor. We don't need to worry about hitting side shots, rear shots, top shots, any kind of shots like that. It's just going to instantly destroy that. And then as you see, it does have a high explosive anti-tank capability as well. And that's effective up to 4,000 meters with a rating of 61. So it's still super effective against T-72s. The T-72s aren't even effective against the M1's frontal armor. But this isn't like, the whole purpose isn't really to like compare the, the systems to each other. 
If we come down to the platforms, we can see that advanced composite armor is obviously better. And this one actually has heat resistant armor as well. So that adds another layer of protection and then smoke discharge systems. So that's a basic breakdown of the tanks and all of this translates to all the vehicles on the battlefield. So if we were to go over to this um, thermal equipped cavalry M3A2 Bradley, you'll see it has the same armor piercing and heat ratings. I mean, not obviously not com when compared to the M1, but it's a bit weaker. So a T-72 can easily engage these Bradleys and destroy it. It does have advanced composite armor as well, but it also has its own weapon systems. Its chain gun does have a seven armor piercing. Remember these IFVs are gonna engage other IFVs or they're going to engage lightly equipped um, like Humvees, just different types of diesel trucks on the battlefield. However, it does have a tow missile. So the tow has a value of 101 high explosive anti-tank at a range of 37 3,700 meters, so it's 3,750 meters, so basically it's maximum range. It's wire guided, so it's going to destroy most weapon systems that stumble into its view at around 3,700 meters when it has that 101 armor pier or high explosive anti-take piercing value. So let's navigate over to the mobile artillery. This one is a bit tricky. It doesn't exactly tell you what its armor piercing value is. It says like 10 area. I'm not quite sure what's meant by area. Um, like is it 10 meters? Like that's something I couldn't find in the manual. So it's a bit more challenging to decipher what that means. I'm not sure if it's like, but you can easily get destroyed by towed artillery. Any type of mortars, they can um, top attack. They'll just pierce your top armor and blow you up, cause catastrophic failure. So you can use a lot of artillery against a lot of um, tanks, IFVs, infantry positions. It just doesn't really define what its armor piercing value is. And that goes for like these ATCMs as well. If we bring them up, we have ATCMs and it just basically gives us, oh, well these actually have an eight armor piercing values. So these ones do have armor piercing values and it gives you two area, which is cool. All right, so there is, so like top attack, it's going to penetrate the top. It's going to blow up most of the rears of the tanks, things like that. It's going to easily destroy infantry fighting vehicles. And then we do have this unit right here, which does have is a forward observer with some cool little armor values, weapon systems. So let's talk, we need to talk infantry. That's one thing we didn't talk about. Infantry do have their own weapon fighting and weapon capability or anti-tank capability. So if we click on this cavalry scout and we go over to his weapon systems real quick, we can see that he has a rocket propelled grenade and it's an M2, M72 law with a 200 meter range. It has a high explosive value of 31 and an area of two at 200 meter range. So each of these hexes represent 500 meters. Basically, if you wanna engage one of these tanks and attempt to destroy it or even an IFV, it, you're you're going to be hex on hex combat. So a unit's going to be on that. Basically the tank's going to have to drive into your hex and you're going to attempt to engage it with your high explosive anti-tank rounds. So these units do have some anti-tank capability, but it's basically within this one 500, me, 500 um, meter hex right here, or this hex, or this hex, or this hex. They're not gonna shoot from this hex into this hex. I mean, they may, so if we're talking like they're right on the edge of it. You can kind of fire like from one hex to one hex, 200 meters, and they may cause some damage, but that frontal armor of the T-72 is going to survive on um, that high explosive round or should survive. Now there's also fire support. We have artillery, but we also have all kinds of aircraft we're going to talk about real quick. So let's just start with our B1Bs. We're talking about our B1s and our A10s. I brought A10s because everyone loves the A10s, but let's start with the B1s. Our B1s, same thing. They're extremely capable units. They have an armor piercing value as well, front and side. So our SAM systems are going to destroy that. We'll visit our SAMs last. They do have cluster munitions. They have a 19 heat. So we're talking like side and rear armor hits or top down. And then they do have um, more clusters. That one is 19. Lots and lots and lots of clusters on this B1. 
relatively super, super, super simple. If we go to the Warthog real quick, the A10. Um, armor piercing about, oh, wow, the B1 has, why was the B1 have better, better armor? I think I saw that. Um, the Gao does have seven, seven armor piercing value. So we're talking front, top down, side, rear hits. Um, is what that gal is going to be effective against. And then we have our rocket pods. 19 high explosives. That's going to be more, mainly effective against infantry. And then more rocket pods. I was hoping it would have ATGM. So this one doesn't have Mavericks or anything. The Mavericks probably wasn't around in the 80s, right? And then lastly, let's visit. We don't need to visit the seed aircraft. Um, the SAM system, the Vulcan. The Vulcan's important because when we have aircraft on the battlefield, we need to understand its armor piercing value as well, which is three armor piercing. So it's going to just sh shred most tanks. It's not going to be super effective against aircraft, but obviously if it hits them in the rear, side, or flank, it could easily destroy them. Overall, super quick video. Um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Peace.